Why are some people reluctant to wear a mask when health experts clearly say it is the right thing to do? Well, to talk more about the mindset behind it, we're joined now by Dr. Sonia Ahmad. She's a clinical psychologist with the Toronto Psychology Clinic. Good to see you. Thanks for your time today. Thank you. Dr. Ahmad, why, in your opinion, are people in some cases rebelling against the wearing of a mask? Well, we know that with COVID, there's a lot of stress and uncertainty, and I think that people are resisting wearing a mask in order to hold on to a sense of normalcy and a sense of control um, in order to maintain some normalcy when everything is so uncertain. I also think that when people are being asked to wear a mask, I think they're feeling controlled. And we know that people often resist when they feel like they're being controlled or their rights are being taken away. Also, there's a lot of emotional intensity, heightened emotion around all the changes. And we know that when people are emotional, it overrides their ability to be rational and to make a rational decision and look at the objective evidence around the importance of wearing a mask. I also think, as to your point, it is becoming political and it is becoming an us versus them issue as opposed to a health prevention, a disease prevention issue. In general, and this is a largely attributed to leadership around this. We don't have enough responsible leadership. People do what others role model for them. We know that a lot of leaders are not wearing the mask consistently and consistently giving the message alongside health authorities to wear a mask. And I think just a lot of people, they have a false assumption that it won't happen to them if they don't know anyone in there network who's been impacted by COVID, they be less likely to think that'll happen to them and less likely to wear it. You know, in this country, there is such a patchwork. To your point on leadership, there's a patchwork of rules. Quebec is the only province where it's a provincial mandate, for example. So one can understand that people might feel they're getting a mixed message. But I wonder, is it also partly, to your last point there, a bit of willful denial? Because coronavirus can be very scary if people start to look at the numbers and the illness and the fatality rate. And as you say, if you don't know someone who's even been sick with it, by not wearing the mask, is that in a little bit avoiding the reality of what's happening? Absolutely. I think that's another piece is that a lot of people are engaging in denial coping to To wear a mask is to say, I'm vulnerable to getting impact. I'm vulnerable to getting it. I think some people just might assume that they're being weak. Well, I want to ask you about other safety measures we have in our lives, because day to day, we naturally do things that benefit or protect other people. For example, even wearing uh, a seatbelt. Is, uh, is it the influence or the uh, control that people are rebelling against in some, in some ways, do you think? Yes, I think, again, when people feel like they're being controlled and influenced, they do tend to act out, sometimes even aggressively and violently, because it becomes less about the mask and it becomes, again, something else. It becomes about um, what you're trying to, you're trying to tell me, you're trying to uh, be condescending towards me, patronizing, trying to tell me I'm wrong, trying to tell me there's something I'm doing that's very wrong. There's multiple reasons why when people are being asked to change a behavior, they are more likely to get argumentative and resist and question and also the issue has been that the messaging has not been very consistent and clear. I mean we started off initially telling people don't wear a mask and it may not be helpful but as we got to learn more and more about the transmission of this virus uh, health authorities started to uh, advocate for wearing a mask and I think people when you first tell them one message and then give another message it gets to be very confusing and I think there's an also an issue of the credibility of the sources as well too. People don't have enough trust in the system. They don't trust the people who are telling them to wear the mask. They'll go They'll go with what the people do, they do trust, the leaders they do trust um, to wear a mask. But there's still a lot of people who are sending out messages that masks are in fact harming you and that don't believe what they're saying as well. So going forward with so much medical evidence that wearing masks can help protect uh, each other, can help protect all of us, how could the wearing of a mask be framed or reframed, marketed to, to get more compliance? 
I think first and foremost, we need to have more responsible leadership around this. We need to demonstrate a unified front. All leaders, all people in a position of power and influence really need to give the same message. And not only do they need to give the same message, they need to consistently wear a mask as well, as we saw, for instance, in the U.S., Trump's not wearing a mask. And even here, we saw some people like Andrew Scheer also be a bit defensive about wearing a mask. Um, as well. And we also need, we also need to make it a social norm. We need to make it the thing that everyone does. And part of that includes putting a ship, uh, shedding a positive light on wearing masks, giving attention to the ones who are positively adopting that behavior, and really kind of not ignoring the ones who are not as well. Thanking people for wearing a mask. I think all too often we're very quick to criticize People um, get kind of critical of them and get a bit accusatory and harsh with them about not wearing a mask versus thinking from them taking a behavior that's very responsible and respectful to the people around them. Excellent point. Thank you so much for your insights today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Dr. Sonia Ahmad is a clinical psychologist in Toronto.